Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing all new Dollar Tree DIYs. I love this time of year at Dollar Tree because they have out all of their new home decor items for the year. I was excited to find these little terrariums. They look like light bulbs. I really couldn't figure them out, but I knew I had to get three of them. Now I wasn't a fan of the gold piece at the top, so I decided I was gonna wrap that with some nautical rope. And don't worry, all the supplies I'm using, I'll link for you down in the description box, plus what I'm wearing. So I started at the base, wrapping around the nautical rope and hot gluing it in place. When I got to the top, I just cut it off and then continued to wrap it around. I did this for all three of my terrariums. Next, I decided to add some white rocks to the base of these. And then I also at Dollar Tree picked up some succulents. This is a great time of year to start buying them because this is when they put them out. And by spring, I feel like all of their succulents are gone. So I'm just gonna pull them out of their bases and put them into the rocks. Now to hang these, I'm gonna use some thinner twine that I had. And I'll just hang them at various levels and here's how these terrariums turned out. I've been noticing the rainbow wall art decor pretty much all over the place. I did a larger wall art where I did something similar, but I wanted to do it on a little bit smaller scale with items from the Dollar Tree. I picked up foam board and I also picked up three things of Dollar Tree spackling. They sell this in kind of like their tool section at Dollar Tree. I'm also gonna be using a trowel. If you don't have one on hand, you can grab them at like Lowe's or Home Depot. I first started by finding the center point in my foam board and making a mark for that. Next, to create a rainbow, I had to figure out the center point to where my top portion was gonna start forming. So I measured up where I wanted that to take place and I put a mark in the middle. Then I needed to create that half circle top of the rainbow. So I just tied a string onto a pin and then I used another pin that would reach out to the edge. And then I just kind of did a windshield wiper motion to create that top portion. I cut this out with regular scissors. You could also use an X-Acto knife, but I feel like I never have an X-Acto knife on hand. Does anybody else feel that way? I just went in with my scissors and cut it out. So next up is the fun part. I'm gonna start adding the spackling on. Now you don't wanna use your trowel here. You, you just want to use any kind of scraper. You could use just a plastic one that you had on hand. Dollar Tree sells these as well. You wanna get the spackling just as even as possible on your entire piece. And then I'm also gonna make sure I have some spackling on the edges. Now this next part may seem intimidating, but it was actually really easy to do. So I'm gonna put my trowel where I want it to start. And I'm gonna make sure that I don't go any farther than that center portion where I was going to start my trowel. I'm just going to push down and draw a straight line up to the top. Once I get to my curve section, I'm just going to curve around 
and then I'll continue down until I get completely off my board. That's it, that's all there is to this. Now you are probably gonna have to let it dry overnight, that's what I did. Now from here you could leave it as is, which is what I did, or you could paint it. It's totally personal preference. Here's how this rainbow spackling wall art turned out. It would also probably be cool if maybe you just painted the top portion of it. But either way, I wanted to leave mine really neutral because that's what I've been seeing in high-end decor. If you love to DIY, you need to be subscribed to my channel. I post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays and I don't want you to miss out. This time of year, Dollar Tree has out all of their new organization. I came across this container. I think it was meant to be a trash can, but I really liked the rattan around it, and it felt like a planter to me. So I started by spraying it with two coats of a black spray paint. I really wanted that detailing to show up because I've been noticing in like Pottery Barn and other high-end sites, a lot of black planters where they use a lot of contrasting colors to give it a little bit of distressing. I'm gonna be using a white and gray chalk paint by Waverly for this project. I'm gonna come in with my foam brush and really you wanna use as little paint as possible. So get a little bit of paint on your foam brush and then wipe it off. You don't want a lot here. And you're just gonna lightly put it onto your piece. And then I even went in with a paper towel and wiped off excess. Now you can also go in with that gray color to kind of tone down if you feel like you put on too much white. You could also add some additional black, but I just kind of added it until I felt like I was happy with it. I really didn't add that much paint at all. I found this really inexpensive plant from Ikea for $12.99 and I'm gonna add that into my planter. Here's how it looks sitting out in my living room. My crafting area after the fall and Christmas season is a wreck. It took me a whole day of cleaning it just to kind of get it back to where I could actually like work in it. And I went through all of my craft supplies and was like kind of figuring out what I wanted to get rid of. And one of the things I found was this globe. I probably thrifted this maybe nine months to a year ago and I never did anything with it. And I knew I had to do a project with it. So I started by spraying it completely black. You may have seen this in some high-end stores and globes are a great thing to find at the thrift store. When I was shopping at Dollar Tree, I also noticed that they had a bunch of new stickers out. So next time you go to Dollar Tree, make sure you check that sticker section. And I found these and I thought they would work perfect for my globe. So I'm just gonna take them off and put them on my globe. I think I ended up adding four. I just wanted them to be kind of a subtle accent around the edges. And here's how my globe turned out styled. So if you guys are new to my channel, you may not know that I do live videos on Amazon once a week. It's a lot of fun and I'm just sharing like my favorite DIY, fashion, kitchen, home supplies over on my live videos. If you haven't seen Amazon Lives, I'll put the link to my live videos down in the description box. You can go check it out. You could also follow me on Amazon. You'll get notified anytime that I go live. It's a lot of fun, so I hope you'll check it out. On the side of my kitchen cabinets, I have a couple of cutting boards that are over there. They're kind of like a medium stain cutting board color. And I've been noticing a lot more darker stains and black stains. So I wanted to add a cutting board that was a little bit heavier and darker. So I found this cutting board at Ikea. It's really affordably priced and I'm gonna be using the darkest stain color I have. Now to stain an item, what I like to do is just use a foam brush and I'm going to paint it onto my piece and I'll immediately come in, take the stain off with a paper towel. Now, since I wanted this stain to be really dark, I decided to actually do two coats. So I added some additional stain to it and wiped it off with a paper towel.
To hang it on the side of my cabinets, I'm gonna add some twine to it. I'm just gonna cut some twine off and tie it at the top. And here's how it looks on the side of my kitchen cabinets. Now these would also really be great in a grouping sitting out on like the backsplash of your counters as well. I want to create a wall art piece and as I was going through my stash of craft supplies, I realized I had a ton of yarn and then I also had a ton of wreath form. So I found this 3D wreath form and I decided to pull off the two larger wreath forms. I actually had two of them, so I ended up with four of the wreath forms. And then I also picked out some neutral yarn that I could use for this project. Now my idea was I wanted to cover half of one of the wreath forms. So I started by hot gluing in the center portion and wrapping it around. Now, if you don't continue to hot glue, your yarn's not gonna stay in place very well. I would say every other time you go around, you're gonna have to add some hot glue to the back just to kind of hold that yarn in place. Now, I did that all the way until I got to the end. And again, with the end, you're gonna have to add in quite a bit of hot glue just to hold it in place and make sure you cover that wreath form. Once I got all the yarn on there, I cut it off. Now, that kind of took a while to do, so I decided with my next one, I wanted to start on the outside and see if that was an easier process. So I actually started by hot gluing to the outer edge and then continuing to hot glue until I got to the center. I wanted to let you guys know that it's actually easier to do it that way, to start on the outside and then add the yarn to the middle. So that's how I did the other two. It was kind of like a trial and error, but I just felt like I didn't have to hot glue as much in the middle when I was wrapping as I did on the edge. So I would definitely recommend starting on the edge and working your way in. Now these are so fun to hang in a grouping on your wall. You can use a nail to hold them in place or you can use command strips, but here's how they turned out on my wall. Let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. I love knowing your guys' opinion and I will talk to you in our next one. Bye.